Oh my God, I always inhale so sharply. <clears throat> ah! What is up, nerds? Cloud here with another Honkai Star Rail video. And in today's video, I don't know why I didn't do it this way first. I'm gonna show you guys how I beat the virtual scent venture using the smelliest tech. I don't know. Get into the video. For these five specific fights, you will have the opportunity to use two trial characters per fight. Those two trial characters are catered to the boss fight themselves, whether they're a weakness or they provide some kind of sustainability. So going into the first fight with the deer, you can see that the illusion traits are passives that you got to keep in mind. They are the gimmicks for each of the boss fights. Just a good thing to remember that the first two passives are across the board for each of the fights. With the weaknesses broken, it delays the boss's action significantly, and it also subsequently increases the damage that they receive. The other trait to keep in mind is when weakness is broken, all allies will get a boost of energy and they'll also recover skill points. So to keep the video as short as I can, I'm going to talk about what worked for me and the teams that I used. This isn't to say this is the end all be all, there are different ways to handle these trials. However, this is just what worked for me. So for every fight, I'm going to be using How How as my healer. She's using a four star light cone. These are her stats. I'm using her for every single fight. I'm using the Trial Sela to do my single target damage alongside my own Dr. Ratio. I'm using the Trial Silver Wolf so that I can do more debuffs so that my Dr. Ratio does more damage. And then I'm using my own Dr. Ratio that everyone has access to currently in the new update with the free five star LC. When you step into the fight, the first thing that you'll see is the remaining action value starts at 2000. It dwindles the longer that the fight goes on and for every action taken by you or by the enemy. As long as you get to 600 and defeat the boss's HP, you'll get the S ranking, allowing you to get all the goodies. Without going super specific into builds, my How How was used for attack boosting, for healing, and for helping Dr. Ratio get a few extra follow up attacks. The trial sealer that I used was there for follow-up attacks as my main damage dealer and weakness break. Silver Wolf is there as the main support, benefiting both Dr. Ratio and specifically Sela. And my Dr. Ratio was there just to add damage since that snack buff that you get allows Imaginary to get more damage too. So the tactic that I used for this first fight was pretty simple. I'm just going to attack one tree branch. Once one of the branches was broken, and I prefer the two on the outside of the boss because when they attack, I gain a little bit more for my ult. After I attacked and destroyed them, the weakness meter was available on the boss. I would save my ults until that moment and then drop everything that I had to attack a single target and then when the weakness is available to attack that on the deer. The only thing I had to really fear on the second phase was the branch closest to the deer on his left will buff him to give him a big AoE after he absorbs that branch. The biggest focus here is to make sure that you wait for your ults until you can attack the weakness on the boss. Destroy one branch. When that branch is revived, destroy the other branch or that same branch. Take your pick, make it click. So the next fight is the Kafka fight. And funny enough, at least from my experience, Kafka was easier. I was able to one-shot it while the deer gave me such a hard time for some unexplained reason. The characters that I used for this fight were the two trial characters. The characters that I brought to the team were How How and Dr. Ratio again. So for those that are unfamiliar with Ruin May, definitely use her during this trial. Uh, she Her overtune allows all damage to be increased by 32% and the weakness break effect efficiency is up by 50%. Her ult gives all type res pen, which is resistance penetration, increased by 25% and she could extend the duration of the weakness break, allowing you to get more damage while they're in the weakness state. Dan Hang, who we all just call him Dill, is a ability point whore. He has a great AoE attack, he has a great ultimate that damages three people. However, just keep in mind when you're using him that you're not taking all the skill points before you can heal, before making sure that Ruin May's buff is still activated. For the scent plugin, I used the Peony scented and the mustard flavored. Uh, I want to do as much ultimate damage as possible for two of my damage dealers. And then when allies gain performance points, their actions move forward 100%. This allowed me to get a few turns doubled. There isn't a point during the fight where her weakness bar isn't able to be attacked. So I just kept the entire party focusing on her using Dill's AoE to kind of take care of the remnants. 
had Dr. Ratio keeping up his follow-up attack as much as I possibly could. And then Rue May kind of acts as a battery to a degree as long as you keep in rotation her overtune for two to three turns. So I don't think that Dr. Ratio was super specific for this fight. It definitely helped with the follow-up damage, but you could even think about bringing Clara, you could think about bringing Blade, or Welt, or Sila, or Ji, Jiayi. A lot of different characters that you could use for this one. I think the specific all-stars were, again, Ruin, Mei, and Dill. So for this fight, I used Hao Hao, and then I used my own Kevka, which I'll have her stats shown on the screen. I used the Trial Blade, and I used the Trial Branya. So this fight, I only got an S on, but I was more than happy with that just because I only wanted to get the maximum amount of points. The team comp here is Branya is going to be pushing Blade up to do more damage and to cleanse single target debuffs. Kefka's here strictly just to uh, keep the dots going. My Kefka's pretty built. I do have her LC. So Blade was my main damage dealer. I used the trial version rather than my own. He did pretty good. The specific reason why Blade's here is to AoE attack, which isn't super significant, but the follow-up attack is really, really good, as well as his ability to keep himself healed, allowing me to kind of focus healing on other characters and use the single target buff from Branya to take away Cleanse. And then my Hao Hao is the same one that I've been using for every other single fight. The one thing to remember for the Yang Ching fight is the sword formation that he has around him where all the swords are like their own adds. They have a specific weakness put on them. Uh, I used a team of three wind and one thunder. Once you eliminate one of the elemental weaknesses of a sword, it transfers to another sword. So. Take your time, just eliminate the swords as fast as possible. You do little to no damage to them, so it doesn't matter if your healer does it. It's only breaking the a weak, uh, the weakness bar. So keep that in mind. On the second phase, the same thing will happen. However, it'll be random where it goes. So I did save my alts with Kefka and Blade uh, so that I was able to pick out which one was weak against Thunder and which one was weak against Wind. So since I'm using a Thunder and a Wind team, I use the Seafood Flavor. And then because I wanted to have my ults up as much as possible with Branya, I wanted to make sure that I had the Onion Flavor uh, as well. I think the Milk Flavor does do well if you're consider if you're taking a lot of damage. Yangqing does have a lot of AoEs. But for this fight specifically, I just kind of bullied my way through, gritted my teeth. He will resummon the swords, which I had to defeat again on the second phase but I did try to get the best RNG to get through the first phase without him resummoning his swords after his weakness bar was broken. Nothing gimmicky aside from the sword formation, which you have to eliminate to even do damage with him to begin with. So for the Branya fight, we also get Japard that gets to throw himself inside the action. Uh, again, uh, the team I used was Hao Hao, and I used the Trial Runmei, and I used the Trial L Ratio, and I don't know, I just called him L, <laughs> and then I used my own Clara. So my Clara is meant for speed killing slowly <laughs> rather than speed killing quickly. So two biggest takeaways with this fight is only one will be the main attacker. So for the first part of the phase, you have to essentially defeat both characters once. Then during the second phase, both of them will be the main characters. So phase one, only one is the main character. So the illusion traits for this one in the first phase, you're going to see that Branya and Japard are both there, but only one is the main attacker. Once you defeat one, the other one gets activated. In the second phase, that's irrelevant. They're both there. I went after Branya first because Branya's buffs, uh, for moving uh, combat readiness, her cleanse, her damage. It was just an, it was annoying. I can I can manage shields. I can't manage the Blicky against me. So just like before, How How is going to be healing, taking away debuffs when need to. Rume does everything all at once, everywhere. So we're going to use her to do more damage and to help with our all uh, resistance penetration. Uh, the ratio for the trial was actually pretty good. I got to say. Um, you want to use him for the follow-up attacks. It is the element that they're weak to, so that's who we're bringing. Um, and I wanted to use Clara. I know that when I fight Japard, I see a lot of AoE. And then if bringing Clara is a real specific unit. I have to say that my Clara was the MVP for this fight. I think the three of them complement each other very well. Uh, the follow-up attack from Clara also gives Ratio an opportunity to follow up. So if you don't have Clara, um, any physical damage, even the MC physical damage will do. Uh, that physical character is going to make Dr. Ratio do just a little bit more damage. The scent plugins that I used was because I'm activating my follow-up attack, I brought the Garn... 
I brought the guard, the gardenia scented, uh, and I bought the argwood. So for the scent plugins, I brought the gardenia scented, uh, which has 100% more damage for follow-up attacks, and then I also had agar wood, uh, which increases the weakness efficiency breaking of all allies. My team was primarily about follow-up attacks, specifically when getting hit and when uh, giving damage. So for this fight, Doctor Ratio was doing like a hundred and four, like almost 150,000 damage per follow-up attack and this is the trial version I'll throw out a 55,000 uh, I'm about to say dollars 55,000 damage and then follow up his own attack to do more so Dr. Ratio uh, was the damage dealer but my MVP for me was Clara because that damage the damage assisted in making them perish faster. God sometimes sentences are really difficult for me. The ads that Japard summons are they're not they're not that difficult. Japar never summons his big goon squad of the big swole shield makers of death. So for this run, it's focusing on either AOE damage or single target damaging the two main enemies. So now we get to probably the best fight of this whole entire event, and that's against Kakolia. It was a really, really cool fight. It had a surprise kind of twist after you defeat her twice. On the complete opposite end of the spectrum, it made me realize how upset I am that I missed out on Topaz. Definitely going to summon <laughs> all the way to the piggy bank when Topaz gets re-released. But anyway, uh, the team that I used was Hao Hao, which is a absolute mandatory unit, specifically because her uh, heal allows for a cleanse. And then I used the trial version of Topaz. I'm telling you right now, this is all about follow-up attacks or dots. That's my opinion. I focused everything on my Kafka because she was weak against Thunder, Kakolia specifically. There was AoE that she brings into the fight. So because the two characters I wanted to focus on was Dots and follow-up damage, I had the Gardenia scented and I had the Magnolia scented as my plugins so that my Dot damage went up and my follow-up attacks went up. So you've already seen my Kefka. My Ruin Mei isn't any better than the Trial version, unfortunately. I have just about the same break effect. So I'm not going to really show her off because it doesn't just show up. And I know this sounds kind of like a flex, but I was able to beat this fight with the SS on my first turn. And truly, I just, I equate that to Topaz, just absolutely destroying Kakolia. So there's a little bit of RNG here. You have to watch out for when Kakolia activates her freezing technique. She'll pick two characters that were attacked previously or characters that have a target on them. Um, those characters are most likely going to get frozen unless your effective resistance rolls well. On the second phase, Kokolia will bring in Japard, which is not a lot of fun. However, in the second phase, Kokolia will bring in Japard as well as those two ice sculptures that she always brings. Japard's weakness is still Thunder and has physical, uh, but also has imaginary. So the only one that he shares along with Kokolia is Thunder, which is why I brought my Kafka. So still on the second phase, I focused my trial Topaz strictly on Kakolia while I had my Kefka kind of AOE hitting with dots uh, to help break the weakness. When Kakolia goes to her third form, it is very recommended that you destroy the ice sculptures. You'll still get frozen regardless and she'll still do her big AOE earth bending from the skies ability. However, when you defeat one of the sculptures, the ability targets are removed so that you're not being focused on. Again, I'm just telling you what worked for me. I only had to play it once. However, you might have to you might find yourself wanting to restart the fight because your healer was constantly uh, being frozen so you're unable to act. Hopefully this was able to help out even just a few people for the content. Thank you for watching the video. If you did, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, maybe even join us live on Twitch Tuesdays Thursdays and Sundays, you are valued, you are appreciated. Yeah.